Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm sharing some of my most amazing DIYs from Poundland that I love. So I'm going to be taking stuff from like for a pound and we're going to be transforming them and making some really amazing home decor. If you're watching and you are like you've got Dollar Tree you can probably most likely follow along because you guys have so much more than we do in Poundland. So make sure you subscribe and I hope that you enjoy watching. We're going to be starting with the first DIY and I'm using this non-stick sandwich tin. So you want to remove the label and then it's up to you, you can leave it black if you want to, but you can also spray paint it using the Poundland sprays, they do a few different colours, I'm going to be going with white. Before I spray paint it, I'm also going to be using these Poundland gems. So you're going to just take a strip and you're going to add them to your sandwich tin all around. So we're going to be creating an edging. Just get it nice and centered. So these are the spray paints that you can get from Poundland. You've got a chalk finished one and this one. I haven't had much luck with this one so I'd probably recommend getting this one here. So I'm just going to pop outside and I'm going to spray paint this. In the meantime, while that's drying, you want to take your rolling pins and these were mine. But this is what you're going to do. You need to take a little saw, Poundland do these as well, and you want to just take off the bits at the end and you're going to need two rolling pins in total so here's my other one so that you've got four legs all together okay I'm back now this has been spray painted doesn't it just look lovely already now you want to turn it around and take your ruler and a sharpie you should probably get a bright color like red and then what you want to do is just measure so that we can stick the legs on and it's nice and centered and even throughout. I'm doing mine an inch in and I've marked that either side. I've got one mark here, one mark there, and then I just did the same for the bottom two as well. Now you're going to bring your legs back <laughs> and you're going to take your hot glue. You can also use super glue or any other glues that you like. And just stick them in the center of where you've marked. Then I'm just going to do the same for all of the others. Oh, and by the way, I'm actually using the Poundland hot glue. I've had it for, I think, a year and a half, something like that, and it's really good. So you can buy that from there as well. They also do the little hot glue sticks. The great thing about using the rolling pins is that it's already sanded. So it's really nice and flat and they act as great legs. So here's the first completed project. I think it's so cute and I love that this just cost me £3 to make and that it's so versatile. I've got my perfume on there at the moment, you can see the Poundland one there. But I know that I can change this up to have my makeup on there or even hold a plant. For the second DIY you're going to be starting with some of these. So remove the labels and then you're going to take one and then spray paint it. Now you're going to need one of these mirrors that Poundland do and they do have a black version as well. Then you're going to bring this back and what you want to do is measure half and then you're going to cut it and we're going to stick it to the mirror. Now this is optional, you don't need to use these, but if you do want them, they are in IKEA. So I'm just going to do a layer of these stones first. So Poundland are currently selling some compost as well as some succulents. So I have three cactus here and I'm going to add them inside. So this is basically a planter, a wall planter. I'm just going to gently remove them and we'll see how much we can fit inside. I'm not sure if I'll use all three. You might get pricked a few times doing this. I don't know why this cactus has lost a bit of its hair. <laughs> I'm going to stick this one in the middle. I might actually be able to fit all three in. Here's the third 
last one. Now these already have a little hook at the back but if you want to change it for whatever reason they also sell these so you can add your own. So here's the second completed project. I think it looks really modern and high end and it only cost me one pound to make because I had everything already but if you need everything including the succulents and this will cost you five pounds but I still think that's a great bargain because it looks so much more expensive than that. Now we're coming on to our final DIY for today and you're going to need this plate that's in Poundland and then you want to paint the middle area here with some white paint. Once your plate's all dry you want to take some grease proof paper. I don't know if Poundland do this, I don't think they do so I think I got this from Asda or Morrison's. And then you want to take an A4 piece of paper and we're going to cut the grease proof paper to size so that it matches A4 and I'm going to stick it down with this glue stick. So here it is stuck to my A4. You need to do this because it's going to be too thin to pass through the printer otherwise. Then you want to measure the inside of the plate. So where you've painted, if you're using the same dish as me, it was 12 centimeters. Then you want to resize the image that you're using to match that so that it can fit nicely inside here. When you place this inside your printer, make sure it's printing on this side where the grease proof paper is. I'm going to be doing a photo of my two cats, it's up to you what you do, you can have your children, you can have your mum, you can do like your spouse. Now the thing is you have to be really quick when you do this because the grease proof paper is basically acting like a stamp. The ink is wet, you just want to get it on there as soon as you can, otherwise it will dry. So that's why I'm telling you all the information now because when I print it I'm probably not going to be talking, I'm just going to go and stamp it on. Now I'm also going to show you another technique to do this just in case. This is tissue paper so I did the same thing that I did before, cut some tissue paper and stuck it onto some A4 paper. And then you're going to do the same thing, place this inside your printer and make sure you print on the tissue paper. Okay so here it is printed, I'm just going to cut them out now. Once you've finished cutting them out, you want to remove the tissue paper from the paper. So be really careful here because you don't want it to rip, it's really delicate. That's one successful one done. Now just the other. And then you can use Mod Podge to glue them down or just a regular glue stick. If you're using Mod Podge, be careful because it can seep through, it's really thin and it can also rip your tissue paper. So I would probably suggest using the glue stick and a small one like this because you have more control over it. Now to finish off I'm just taking a little bowl and I'm going to hot glue that just at the bottom. If you can find one of those stands for the plates that's great or you can use some backings so that's what I'm going to go with maybe this one. I'm just going to hot glue it on the back so that I can hang it. And here's today's final project. Wouldn't this make such a great gift as well for someone? Okay, so I am starting with this placemat from Poundland. And then you're also going to need a rolling pin. But what you want to do with your rolling pin is cut off the bottoms. So this is on either side of your rolling pin. And you're just going to cut them. But you're going to need two in total so that you have four legs. 
So we're just going to remove the packaging and get started. You want to remove these because they're just going to get in the way of the legs that we want to stick down. So they come up pretty easily. So before I stick the legs down, I'm just going to add some white acrylic paint. And I'm not going to add too much because I do like the wood coming through. So what I do is I just take a baby wipe and I just kind of like smudge it on. You'll see it's quite light doing it that way. Yeah, it's decided to join us as you can see but this is how it's come out so you can see it's really light it's just like a stain this is what i do to save money so now i'm just going to take my hot glue to add the legs on but i do recommend using something strong because this is quite heavy so you want to use like an e6000 or a super glue i'm just doing this because it's quick for the project and just in case i want to use the legs for another diy Now I have my table made, I'm going to take some stamps, this is optional, and I'm using this set here from Craftspire, the link will be in the description box. I really love these because they're quite like lacy, like shabby chic, and I do like shabby chic. I do wish that I had some white ink because I feel like white would have gone with this really nice, and I don't think I've ever seen white ink, I even tried off camera adding some white acrylic paint and even some modelling paste but sadly it didn't work so I decided I'm going to try the gold ink instead and hopefully that comes out okay as you can see I'm just stamping that as a border across the placemat or rather the table now I'm taking one more stamp and I think I'm going to go with silver this time this glittery silver. I'm just going to place this in the center. Look at how beautiful this is coming out. Ta da! Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I was really nervous about doing that, but it came out fine. Look at it. So that's the first DIY done from a placemat and some rolling pins. And this one is really quick guys, I'm just going to be using some of these tiles, I really love blue and white, I just love that combination of colours and the whole style. So I'm going to be using these and what I want to do is just cut this one here and I'm not sure which other one, but yeah we're just going to cut it and we're going to stick it on to these clusters. This is optional, I'm just taking my blue ink and going over the corners or the border of these coasters to match the blue on these tiles and you're just going to remove the backing and stick it in the center and then i'm just doing the same with the second one taking my ink and then i'm going to cut and just stick it on To finish up, I'm just going to use some of this from Poundland, and this is in the colour, it says cream, but it kind of looks like silver to me, and I'm just going to apply little dots across the coaster. So this is what the finished coasters look like. I'm really happy with them, and I think they make wonderful gifts as well as something to make and sell. Moving on to the third and final DIY for today, I'm going to be making a menu board. I was actually going to do this with the blackboard from Poundland, but I have decided to go with a frame because this will be easier for you. So I'm just going to remove all of this first. Now I actually wanted a black frame, but they had sold out. I don't know why, white is always in stock, but black isn't. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black colouring using some of my watercolours just because it's really quick to dry. And as always, I rave about Arteza products, so the link is in the description box if you're interested. So I just distressed it a little bit so you can see a little bit of the white coming through. So once you've removed all of your glass and the backing, you can go on to Photoshop or Word 
And what you want to do is write menu on the top the days of the week. And I've chosen some really nice fonts after fonts. So that's D A F O N T. It's a really good website. I always use their fonts. So this is A4 and this doesn't quite fit. So you're just going to have to trim the excess here at the bottom. I've placed the original paper that was inside the frame just so that I have a template and know how much to cut. I'm going to pretty this up using some stamps. I haven't used these yet. I got them, I think, on eBay. And I'm going to use this one here, but it's quite big. So I'm just going to use probably half of it in the corner there. Again, just taking these inks. Just going to add some. I'm going with silver because I'm kind of using black, silver and gold in this like theme that I'm doing, these DIYs. A little bit of blue I might add as well, we'll see. Position it where you like. And just stamp it on. Look at how beautiful that is. It looks faded, which I really like. I didn't want it to be like strong or bold and I think I'm just going to add a little on that corner as well and lastly just one more so you're going to bring back your frame and then place your glass inside And then your menu on the back of the frame. And now I'm going to add one last thing to this. And that is going to be using my silicon moulds and my hot glue. So I left that to set for probably two minutes. And this is how it is. I'm just going to clean it up because you can see there's a little bit that needs cleaning. So I've got my little scissors to do that. I'm just going to paint it using some of this gold paint. I'm just going to glue this on to the centre of the frame now. Again, just taking my hot glue to do that. So then finally all you're going to need is a whiteboard marker so that you can write down what you're having for dinner and simply wipe it off. So let's write curry and then this is just a little baby wipe. This is how easy it comes off. And then you can also do a to-do list version if you don't want to do a menu or perhaps do both. I think that's what I'm going to be doing because I love to-do lists. So here's the finished menu and you finally get to see the detail of those flower stamps because the camera wasn't picking it up that well before. Aren't they just so beautiful? I really love delicate touches like that. For our first hour, we're basically going to be giving this a little bit of a transformation, make it look more high-end. To do this, you're just going to need £2-land items. So this is just going to cost you £2 or just over £2. This here from the artificial plant section and then this mirror. You're also going to need a belt. So I've got this old belt that I'm just going to make use of. So place it on top of your mirror and measure how long you want it because we're going to cut it. This is way too long, obviously. So I'm just adding it to the mirror and I think I'm going to cut it around here. And to make this extra secure, because we are going to be hanging it, you want to take a stronger adhesive. I am going to be using a combination of hot glue and this one here. So you can take some super glue. We want to add it to the bottom here and then on the other side as well and then also taking my hot glue 
So I'm just going to stick it on first. Try to center it. And just hold it down for some time. And then we're going to do the same for the other side. And you want to make sure that it's matching the other side. Now you don't have to add glue all the way here because when you hang it, it goes taut anyway. So you can totally leave off here if you really like it nice and simple. But if you want to decorate it a little bit more, then you can go ahead and just do that. So I'm just taking these and we're going to add them on the side here. You want to take your Poundland pliers and then we're going to snip it off right at the bottom. So I've just taken a little bit of hot glue and added it there and then work out how you want to style it. These do move, they've got like wires so you can style them how you like. And I'm just going to carry on gluing them to the side of the mirror. And as simple as that, the first DIY is completed. It wasn't that really quick, but look at how expensive it looks. For the second DIY, you're going to take one of these from Poundland, and then we're going to get rid of this part here. So just cut it off. The other thing you're going to need from Poundland are these. They come in a set of three. So you can leave the background plain, this one here, but I think I'm going to add a little detail to it using some of my washi tapes. So I'm just adding it to the bottom. Honestly, so happy with this washi tape. Look how beautiful it is. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I am going to be taking these handles. They're really cheap. You get a small pack from Wilco. I can't remember what it was, but it was a few pence. And I'm just going to paint them first. I'm going to choose a darker colour. So I'm using my Arteza paints. You can use the Poundland ones, but if you do want to use Arteza, the link is in the description box. They are really, really good quality and I definitely recommend them. just adding a little bit more detail kind of like staining it now I don't have any stains so what I do is I take a little bit of paint on a baby wipe and then I just kind of do this and um, like rub it in on the surface and it gives it a really nice distressed look and look at how much more expensive that looks now so I'm just going to move on to my next painting job while these dry. So you can leave these white if you like. I'm just going to add some colour to them. So first you're going to remove these. And if it's stuck like this, don't worry about it because that will be covered anyway. So I'm just going to do the same for all the other two. So I think I'm going to go with two black and then my third one I'm going to have in the middle and I'm going to be using this colour here and I am using my sponge brush to do this because I feel like it applies paint better and more evenly and also covers the surface quickly as you can see I sometimes like when I'm using the paintbrush you'll have the paint paint brush strokes and I also like the texture that this gives now you don't have to paint the inside, just make sure that you go over the edges a little in case that does show, but we're going to be covering the inside with some plants and gravel anyway. Now I'm just going to paint my final one. So again, just taking my sponge brush. Look at what beautiful colour that is. Reminds me of the terracotta uh, pots. So everything is nice and dry now and I'm really happy with the paint job. I'm going to take the handles and I'm going to just glue them on either side so that we've got a really nice tray. And now if you want to make this actually like really strong, then don't just use hot glue, but 
This is just for decorative purposes, so I'm fine with just using this. Now you can fill this up with sand, you can fill it up with a floral foam brick and then just add some moss on top or just sand on its own with some succulents or you can fill it with some stones like gravel. I've just got this from Ikea so I'm just going to fill it up with that. And then Poundland sells some succulents, these are different ones I have already but they do sell a few there so you can pick them up and then just add them in the centre. So here's the second DIY completed. I'm really happy with this. I think it looks trendy, so high end, and I really love the color combination as well. For the third DIY, you want to take one of these picture frames from Poundland, and then they've also got the netting in the garden section. So I've got this, and I've just cut some a little piece off so I think I'm going to have to trim it a little bit more but what you want to do is just remove the backing from the photo frame and the glass because you're not going to need that you're also going to get rid of these clips with these pliers again from Poundland so I'm just going to take my hot glue and add it to the sides of the frame all across so that we can stick down this to this. Now you're going to need some twine from Poundland and a bottle. They do little jars but I only had a set of two. Initially I actually wanted to use three, so like one here, two and three, but I just don't have enough so I'm going to have to use just one. So you want to place your twine inside the chicken wire and then you're going to take your bottle and place it in the centre if you're just using one. If you're using three then you can just place one either side and then you're going to tie it around the neck of the bottle so that we basically hold it in place with some of this twine. I'm going to tie a knot. Make sure it's really nice and tight. Just tie it again. Then I'm going to cut it. Now I'm just going to add a little bow. This is pre-made I got like a pack of multicoloured ones for a few pound off eBay because I really am so bad at making bows. So there we go, that's just perfect. And now you're just going to add your flowers. So you can take some artificial ones from Poundland. They don't do that many, so I think I might have to improvise a little bit and use a bit for my stash. So this is what I found. I think I got this from Wilco. Just going to cut it. I think that's actually is that wire? Yeah, I'm gonna need pliers for that. So I'm going to cut it a little bit so I can fit it in because it's a little bit too long at the moment. And so this is today's final project. Let me know what you think of all of these ideas or if you're going to be recreating any. So I'm going to be taking these, uh, they're actually in the summer toys range area and we are going to need two packs solely because of these parts here which are going to act as the legs. Now it's up to you if you want three legs, I am going to go for three, I just feel like it looks you know a little bit more trendy but you can choose four legs if you want because you get two in one pack so if you buy two packs you will have four legs anyway. So you want to start with taking the hoop and as you can see I've made two holes here that's going to be for the legs so we're going to poke those in and just secure them with some glue but I am going to go and make the third hole for the third leg now. If you're doing four you're going to probably place one here and then one corresponding at the top and this is really easy to break, to break through you just take your scissors or something sharp and there you go 
just make sure you kind of make it a little bit bigger so that the point can actually fit. I am going to be using hot glue but maybe like depending on the size of the plant that you're going to have in here you might want to use two combination of glues so like super glue maybe E6000 this is kind of like another alternative that I use just because it's cheaper so I'm just going to fill it up now with my hot glue hopefully that will suffice alone poke it through I'm also going to add a little bit just on the edges to secure that in place. Make sure that you are happy with like the angle that it's at. So just go around it all like it's pretty much like sealing it in place. Now I'm going to do the same, just plopping a little hot glue and then sticking that inside and being really careful when you're doing this because this gets really hot because of the hot glue now I've just got one left so it's up to you how many rings you add I think I'm going to go with one but you can do two three however many you like and then spray paint it so the spray paint that I've got is actually from Poundland as well I haven't used this yet and I haven't heard good things about it so hopefully it works okay I don't have a primer or anything so I'm just going to go with it and just see how it comes out this is matte and I was just debating between which colours to actually do because I was thinking white maybe rose gold but I think black is going to give it a really high-end look so I'm back now and this is nice and dry and I actually really like that spray paint. I didn't have any problem with it whatsoever. I really love the finish. It dried really quick so I'm definitely happy with it. While I was out there, I did take a bowl. I actually changed my idea a little bit or added to it rather. I was going to have it like this and then the plant is sitting inside. But I decided it kind of looks like something is missing. I didn't want to add any more rings to it so I knew that. And then I went and looked at my Poundland haul and I grabbed this um, bowl. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. Um, and I've actually spray painted it. And I really love this because it isn't perfect. It kind of looks handmade, like the edges go up and down a little bit. And I spray painted it gold. I thought it would really complement the black and gold. So what I'm or, or rather the black so what I'm going to do is just add it to the top here with some hot glue maybe some super glue as well and then it's just down to you what you'd like to place in there really you can have some succulents you can have an actual plant or like you know have a few little plants in there and if you want to you can also add a little bit of like for example if you have painted it gold you can add gold just to the bottom of the legs here so just in case you've forgotten, these are the Poundland items that we've used to create this. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> I mean, who would know that this just costs us £2? It cost me 3 only because I used a bowl as well. But if you don't use the bowl, it will just cost you £2. For the next project, you're going to take this Poundland frame. And I really love these because it's deep and there's just so much more possibilities when it's a deep frame. So cut this off. And then you're going to take the twine and also cut that off on both ends. And if you're left with the little bits here, you can pull them out with pliers and they come out easily. It's up to you if you would like to paint the frame or the background as well as the planters themselves. So what I'm using for the planters are actually these dishes from Poundland. You get three in a pack just for a pound. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take two. You can do three or one in the center if you like. I think I'm going to go two because three seemed too crowded. Also I only have two anyway because I used the third one in another project previously. So I've got these planters that fit in there nicely and I think I'm going to use those. I might spruce them up a little bit. So Poundland do sell some faux succulents. These are actually from Ikea. So just make sure that 
the kind of evened out before you stick it down and then you're going to take your hot glue again you can use a combination of glues so like super glue I'm going to apply it all here I wish they made like a really long glue stick that just went on and on and you never had to change them So yep, that is a lot of glue. Make sure it's nice and centered. And you know what would be really nice actually is having actually fresh herbs inside here. So like parsley, coriander, that kind of thing. So I've just placed it in there just to make sure that I've given it enough height before the other planter. And now again, just take your hot glue and secure that in place. What I like to do is when I've got a full plant like these, you know, they don't look too great sometimes. I mean, the succulent itself is pretty decent for a full succulent, but the base, just look at that, doesn't cut it for me. So what I like doing is just taking some moss to cover that up and make it look more natural and realistic. So I get this from the park. Look, I've got a hole. <laughs> big amount there so when you are out in the park just grab yourself a little bag because it does come in so handy for crafting and it's free so I'm just going to add some hot glue on the base so that I can add the moss in you can have it coming down the sides a little bit if you like and then I think I'm going to also add a touch of colour. I'm going to go with gold. And I'm not going to add too much, it's just going to be like here, just on the top, a thin layer. And I actually do not mind those brush strokes at all because that is actually the look I was going for. I want it to look kind of like, you know, the abstract paintings. I purposely chose like a dry brush. It's funny because I generally don't like brush strokes showing but today I was like I really feel like that is the touch that this plant needs. So just tucking the moss away for a bit there. And I'm going to do the same. Once this is dry I'm going to just let the moss settle back to its original place dangling down a little bit. So I'm doing the same with this planter taking my hot glue and adding some moss and then adding the paint. So Panan do come out with some moss but it tends to be around Easter. I wish it was like year long because it comes in so handy for crafters. And the reason why I'm just painting this bit here is because when it's in this other planter there's only a little bit that pops out and that's going to be where the, sh the colour shows. So that's two planters done and we're going to just set those aside, clean up a little bit while they dry before we add them inside. So these are nice and dry now. Going to pop them back in. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more detail. Just taking my paintbrush how I did with, with this part here and instead of painting it gold I'm just going to add uh, maybe a black strip across these. You can do little dots on there if you want it to kind of look a bit scandy. I was just sort of playing off camera and I really like the way that this came out actually. So I'm going to show you what I did. So I think I made, I have to remember now myself, I think initially I just drew the line. And then I wanted to rub it out or tidy it up a little. And I think it just makes it look like more Scandinavian. I've decided I am going to leave the background white and I thought I was going to leave this, this colour. But I might go in and add a little colour to it. Or rather take away from the colour because I'm going to be going in with some black. And then maybe some of this gold as well, we'll see. 
I think I'm actually going to place everything that I'm making in my bathroom. Give my bathroom a little bit of a makeover, I think. So I'm just doing the tips of the paintbrush. Going down a frame. Again, I'm not worried if it isn't straight. You can get away with it with these kind of DIYs or this kind of style. Yeah, it's just um, the abstract kind of one. So this is how the second finished project looks. I'm really happy with it, even though this isn't exactly what I planned, but I really do like the way that it came out. And I think I'm going to make another one for my kitchen to put fresh herbs in there, like I mentioned to you before. For the next project, you're going to need a toy. He is so perfect. Look at how well done he is. Really great quality. So he's perfect just the way he is, but we are going to spray paint him. Then you're going to need a bowl. These come in a pack of four. So now I'm taking one of these bowls and I'm painting it black only because I ran out of the spray paint. And if you want to add texture, you can take a sponge brush like this. You can see it's not smooth. Sometimes I do like just to add a little bit so I don't have that kind of smooth finish. It depends what I'm going for really, but I just decided I will do that for this bowl. So I've done the outside and let that to dry and now I'm just doing the inside. So he is going to get spray painted gold. Once your bowl is nice and dry, you're going to take your hot glue and stick it on. I am actually going to use two combinations just to make sure it's nice and secure. Honestly, it's amazing what you can do with some basic items. This cost us again just two pounds, but look at how a crazy high end this looks. It's absolutely majestic, gorgeous, and I'll tell you for sure that it definitely looks like it cost us way more than two pounds. So the first thing you want to grab is this dog toy. Now I know you're thinking what the heck are we going to be doing with this so I'm going to show you in a little moment. Obviously you're going to remove that and then you want to take a craft knife because we're going to be needing to cut this. So obviously be really careful with this part but let's say we want it right there in the middle. I'm just going to cut it and you can see it really actually cuts pretty easily so you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Then you're going to just cut the other side try to make sure that it's as even as possible Leo's making his usual appearance so once you're done cutting your two halves you should be able to stand them up nicely and they shouldn't fall down or anything like that now if you want to you can cut the second one a little bit shorter if you just want a little bit of a difference instead of them being the same but what you're going to go and do next is take some champagne flutes and you're going to use the bottom half so this part here now you're going to be needing some glue and I am going to use a strong glue here. This is like the E6000. So I'm going to use that just to stick this down, the bottom of the flute. So with this next one here, I'm going to actually use it as almost like a vase to display some flowers so you can have some dried flowers. So all I'm doing is taking my scissors and going in on the center and just cutting around this. So creating like a rectangle shape and then I'm going to take all that little middle out. And now I'm going to start painting it. So you can take whatever colour you want and this is just some acrylic paint. Now I'm using my sponge brush because I feel like it's easier to apply the paint to this surface especially. And now I'm going to take my other one and paint it in a different shade to that one there. So as you can see I'm just finishing off the vase, adding the flowers and you just simply push them in and they're nice and secure. So these are dried flowers. And now with this one here, you can take a tea light and place it on top. So that would look really nice, I think, in the middle of a, a dinner table. And you can dress it up like according to seasons or holidays. And the other idea I have is to use a dinner 
candle like this. So you can have it the full length or you can cut it smaller if you like, but I do like the full length. So I'm just gonna pop that inside. So just in case you forgot, this is what we started with, a one pound dog toy. And this is the after. I'm really loving the mid-century modern art kind of decor lately, as well as these colours and textures. And don't forget the inspo that we saw was £26 and that was on sale. And we created this for a pound. For the next DIY, you're going to pick up one of these A4 photo frames or whatever size you want and colour. I've gone for the gold. So I'm just taking all of the packaging out, opening this backing. Now I do suggest for this DIY using some cards. So I'm going to grab the Poundland A4 card. So this is how it looks. Now for this part, you're going to take a pencil. You also want something to draw along. So I've got this and I've got two sizes. You're also going to need two sizes. So for the first one, I've just placed it on top, try to make sure that it's even this side and this side and then you're going to draw like half a moon. So I've just stopped there and then I just added the line. And then for my second one I know, I, or rather I knew that I wanted it bigger so I took this plate and then placed it on the paper Again, drawing half. And then just taking my pencil again to finish. And then at the bottom, I then took, went back to this jar and then I wanted it upside down. So this one here, just upside down. So I took the jar, placed it on front of my card. Again, just drawing a half. Then take your pencil and finish off. Now you're going to grab some water and some watercolour paints. Well you can use acrylic if you want but I'm using watercolour paints because I kind of like that it almost looks like a print and not all of the areas are going to be exact and I really like that, that some areas will be darker than others in terms of shading. So I'm just wetting my water, um, my paintbrush and then adding some black paint to it. And you can go for any color that you want and just go ahead, fill in each shape. So we're just going to color it in, paint it rather. So there's the first one done and you can see now what I mean regarding like the colour not being even all throughout. Right and once you're done you're gonna set this aside to dry before we add it back to the frame. For one pound we've created another high-end abstract decor piece. Please don't go and spend £40 on a print. I have created this in a digital format for you. So if you don't fancy doing it all yourself, you can just print it out. It is free, it's in my description box and then you can just simply pop it in your frame. For the next DIY you're going to be taking another dog toy. And what we want to do is, this is going to be really quick and simple. You just want to cut this off. And it is going to be a little bit hard doing this because it's pretty thick and destructible for the dogs. Once you've finished cutting it, you're going to have these. So the way that I'm going to tidy this up is just to take my scissors and I'm basically poking it to make it smaller and just hide in that gap there. So you can see the difference there, look at how nice and tidy that is compared to this one here so just doing the same and I was inspired by these minimalist objects that I've seen it's quite like a trendy thing and I just saw this dog toy and straight away saw the object and thought okay can do a little DIY hack with this 
Right, so I tried spray painting this and it didn't go very well. So I'm going to take my trusty sponge brush and some acrylic paints. And we're going to have a go with that. Hopefully it works a lot better than spray paint. Okay, that's definitely better. So this is how it looks so far. I've actually placed it on a pencil just so that I can do it all because I'm really impatient. So now I'm going to stick this in a floral brick so that it can dry. So here it is, prob tub, and I'm going to leave this to dry for 24 hours. So this is the before, another one pound dog toy, and this is the after. It definitely came out better than I expected actually, and I'm really happy with it. I think less is more with these kind of things, and they do make a statement. So today we've taken three Poundland items and transformed them into something else altogether. Look at these amazing home decor pieces. We've definitely saved a ton of money and that's what I love about making these. So you can start by grabbing some champagne flutes that I got from Poundland and the buttons come off so that's what we're going to be using. You're going to need two buttons and then you're going to grab some baubles. I actually got this inspiration from searching for some home decor, some trendy home decor. So this is my inspiration piece up here and I thought I can make this. So that's what I went ahead and did. So I'm going to take these baubles and I have removed, I'll just show you how to do that, it's very easy. You take this piece off and then grab your pliers and it just breaks off really easily like I said. Then you're going to get your glue gun and we're going to start sticking them on to the bottom of the champagne flutes. So I'm going to use four in total, again just removing these bits that I don't need. I definitely recommend working with baubles that aren't glittery. Mine were so they were having a tough time sticking together with the hot glue so I just started sanding as much glitter as I can off and that really helped them stick together better. And make sure that you try to keep it all straight. This one now, I'm going to turn it this way and sand the bottom because I need the hole for that. So I'm probably going to actually make the hole a little bit bigger with the pliers. Now I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to just wedge this through and turn your scissors around like this. Let's see, is that big enough? Nope. Just go back. So I'm going to secure this again with the hot glue. And you can use a stronger glue if you like. I always just use hot glue because it's quicker for the projects. And then turn it around, add your hot glue at the bottom. And stick it on to the rest. Once you have your structure, all you need to do is spray paint it. Once you've spray painted it, you can go ahead and add your candle on top. So Poundland do a lot. They've got this one here, the ball candles, which I love. You've got the pillar candles. You've also got LEDs and then you also have the dinner candle. Just had to go and fetch it, so this one here. Again, this is one of my favourites. So this is how the finished project looks. I'm really happy with it. It was so quick and easy, so inexpensive to put together, basically under a pound. And I just love this mid-century modern minimalist design. For the second DIY, you're going to go onto the internet, grab an image that you like. I am obsessed with this line art at the moment, so I thought I'm going to use that. And we're going to cut it, and you're going to take these. These are actually from the Poundland kitchen aisle. It's a mix of glasses. You get three in a pack. So yeah, I'm going to cut it and place it inside the cup. Once you've cut it, and don't just cut the image like square, keep it long like this because you want to put it in the cup this way. I'm going to use some masking tape just to stick that down. Oh god, I've done this again. <laughs> I do this with cling film as well, I really mess it up. 
So you can see now the tape has just made it secure so you don't have to worry about it moving around. And then you're going to take your Sharpie pen and you're going to go over the design. So I've just done that off camera <laughs> and now we're going to have the big reveal. Okay, okay, that's not bad. So I just went over it again and I think that really helped because it was quite light so that's two layers of Sharpie pen. Now you're going to grab some paint. So I am using Arteza Terracotta. This is a new paint so I haven't used it before. I'm excited to see how it's going to dry and kind of what colour it actually comes out because sometimes when it dries it comes out like lighter or darker. I'm going to leave the product links in the description box. I have to clean my cup first. It's got all dirty inside. And you can use this as a makeup holder, whatever you like. I think I'm actually going to go with that, with a make makeup brush holder. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. Doesn't that look like something you would buy? I am so happy with that. Oh, and I wanted to mention, if you don't like this kind of thing, like the whole face liner, then use this concept and draw on there whatever you like. You don't have to stick to this, obviously. I just like to point that out because sometimes people just think, nah, that's not my thing. But I really do think it's a fab idea that you can just tailor to your own style. So this is how it looks with some makeup brushes in. I really love it and I hope you do too. Honestly, I've seen things like this selling really well in H&M Home, so you know it's trendy. Really simple and easy. This is probably the quickest one of them all. You're going to take two of these cocktail bowls and I got my inspiration. It's called a bubble vase. This one in particular is called a double bubble vase and I'm going to leave the inspo there. You're going to see that's £29. It was actually reduced. I think it was around 35 to begin with and we're not going to be paying prices like that, are we? So you're going to grab two of these just for £2. You're going to apply your glue. Again, whatever glue that you want to use. I'm just using cock glue as always. So go around the whole thing and then take the other one, just place it on top. Then you're going to take your paint. You can paint this by hand if you want. I am going to spray paint it. I think I'm going to go with this colour just because it goes with the other DIYs. So this is how it came out once I finished spray painting it. I then placed my pampas grass in there and I just think that finished it off. It was like the final touch. So to create our first expensive looking DIY, you're going to take one of these frames and you can get them in black, you can get them in gold. I've got a white one here. I tend to like white and sometimes black. So they have the 8x10 and they've newly got a A4 size so you can go for that. Now I'm going to remove all of the packaging and then I'm going to create a, what do you call it, a mount, like I think it's called mounting, where you've got like a little border inside. I'm going to create that using this card here and you can get the card from Poundland as well. Now you don't have to create a border, you can just go without, but I think it makes it look more posh. This is what happens when I'm filming. <laughs> Leon's taking over the table. So the way that you're going to do this is just take this piece, once you've removed the backing, let's place that aside. So this is the size of your frame. So as you can see this is an A4 but it doesn't quite fit because I've got the 8x10. So I'm just going to cut it to size first. Once you've done that you can remove that so you've got your card. Now we're going to create a border, so this is the only way that I could think to do this. I'm just taking my ruler, aligning it with the paper, and then I'm going to draw along it. And then place it on the sides, doing the same thing, taking your pencil, just draw along that. And then you're going to do this side and the bottom as well. So once you've got your border done like this, you want to cut this square out. So the way that I'm going to do it is just making a hole, be very careful, and then I'm going to cut along the lines that we've drawn. 
So now we have our border. I'm just going to turn it this way so that I don't have to rub all of the pencil markings out. Then you're going to grab your picture frame back and slot that in. Now you're going to need some material. Pan and do these fat quarters. So I've got a fat quarter here that I have used, but I don't have enough or rather it needs ironing and I don't have the time to do that right now so I am going to be taking some other material that I have got but like I said you can use the pan and ones and then you're going to bring back this remember this was from what we've cut out because you're going to need the correct sizing and you're going to use this as a template placing it on top of the material and then you're going to take your pencil draw around it so that you know how much to cut. Now it doesn't matter if you cut a little bit more because it won't be seen and I actually think you should do that just to be safe. So I am giving it a little bit extra there on the edges and on the sides. So I'm just checking everything fits nicely. Okay, I'm going to have to remove these because I completely forgot one step. So just setting those aside. You're going to take your printout, if Leo lets me, because this is what's happening right now. Honestly, he's got so much space everywhere else, but he just has to sit on everything. <laughs> Leo, get off. So you're going to go onto the internet and you're going to type in line art, faces, you can look for a female face and you'll find quite a few. So print the one that you like. This one really stood out to me and I just knew that I loved it. So I printed it out. You're going to bring your frame back and then gently remove your glass. And then you're going to place the glass on top. So you've got the paper on the bottom and the glass on top. And then you're going to take a marker pen and pan and do these. This one I've got off Sedil because it's a fine liner. And now I'm going to go over it. So just make sure it's nice and clean. And then take your time just going over the design. So after some time I've just finished now and I'm really happy with this pen. Uh, there was just a lot of control with the nib. Look at the nib how fine it is and you could just bend it. So I was able to do even the thicker parts and the finer parts just with the same pen. So now I'm going to remove this, the paper from underneath and we're going to reveal how it looks. Hopefully it's good. Ta-da! Look at that, you can call yourself an artist. <laughs> right, so you're going to bring your frame back. Then put the glass back in. Honestly, you could just have it like this. That would look really nice. I'm going to bring back my other pieces now. So I've got the card. And then my piece of material. And you don't need to stick this in place because this is going to hold it in. So just gently placing it on top, being careful not to move anything that's underneath. And then I'm going to clip those back in place. And we're done with this DIY. So let me just do this and we'll have a look at what it looks like. Okay, just one quick correction that I'm doing. I had a look at it and there wasn't enough contrast. This is too light against the white and also against the frame. So I'm taking this. I actually had planned to use this initially, but I was like, oh, it might look better with this. And I should have just stuck with what my gut instinct was. So I am just going to be cutting this burlap to this size. And then I'm going to be placing it as the material instead of this one here. So here's the first finished project, really quick and easy, so simple, doesn't cost much at all, but look at how high-end it looks. For the next year, we're going to grab these vases from Poundland, and can you believe that these are just a pound? It's really thick and great quality as well. And then you need some of these. I know you're probably thinking, what the heck are we going to do with these? These are in the toy section, modelling clay. We're going to be making a face with these, so you want to roll it out 
and we're going to start with the eyebrows and nose and they connect together or actually we might start with the eye because the eye is, is quite easy to do so once you have rolled it out you're going to make a shape like this look at how easy that is just twirling it and now we're going to do the eyebrows and the nose just give this a little bit of like a point otherwise it looks a little bit too thick at the ends need to roll it out to give it a little bit more length and you want to also make sure that it's even because sometimes when you're rolling it you've got a big thick piece here and then it's thin towards the end so you just want to make sure it's nice and even and then I'm going to give it a bit of a tip there so you're going to arch this part here and arch that part there like this and then we're moving on to the lips so I've actually made mine already in the corner over there but I'm just showing you how to model it and then for the lips again just point the edges sorry my camera's all the way there that's better isn't it and then curve this bit here and then if you want to cut it off you just cut it off and again give it a little point and then we're going to do the bottom part of the lip don't need that much so I'm going to cut that off and it doesn't matter if it's not in the same colour because we're actually going to be spray painting this so just make do with what you've got and I think I'm happy with that so that's our little face that we're going to be sticking on to the vase so I'm just taking my vase now and attaching all the bits and this is going to just need a little bit of pressing down don't squish it too much because you might ruin the work that you've done taking his nose and attaching that Whoops. Now I'm just sticking the eye on and then moving on to the lips It's really coming together now isn't it? It's going to look even better when we actually spray paint it So I went outside to spray paint it and I do usually use the Poundland spray paint but I think they've stopped selling them so I am using the Wilco one here it's pretty inexpensive but if you can find any cheaper ones please do let me know in the comments because I'm running out and they are quite pricey elsewhere this is my other kitty cat and <laughs> she was outside, I gave her my robe to keep warm as I was spray painting. Leo always makes an appearance so I thought I'll just show her as well. Then I headed back upstairs to my craft room and I got a bunch of these to stick in the vase. I thought we'll just really finish it off nicely. I actually got these last year for some autumn crafts but they're coming in really handy for just general decor. So here's the finished project and the finished look, really happy with it again, just so high end, really pleased with the final outcome and no one would ever guess that we just used a pan and vase and some modelling clay from the kit section. Now for the third DIY we're going to be taking this trinket dish from Poundland. This was actually 50p, I remember it was in sale and you can see that it's been used quite a lot. I've got a lot of chips on there and I'm actually going to hopefully cover all that so it's not going to matter. So you're going to take the modelling clay again and I'm going to be covering this whole bit here um, just because I want it to look really handmade like it's entirely made from clay. So you're just going to thin it out like this and cover as much as you can. You're going to have to use a few pieces and it doesn't matter if it's not the same colour because we'll paint over it or you can spray paint it. Good boy. Mm. 
trying to smooth out any cracks as well and get it as even as possible and can you see how I'm trying to bring it over the edge I think this is as far as it will cover with just the one so I'm just taking the other piece now and doing the same thing going over the edges smooth it making it like as smooth as I can and thin it, thinning it out sorry I can't talk <laughs> So this looks pretty funky already actually. Um, try to smoothen it out. As you can see that's what I've tried to do because we're going to place the face on top now and then we're going to paint it. So I'm going to be starting with the ears and I'm really liking this modelling clay from Poundland. It's actually really good, really soft and easy to like mould. So the ears are going to be pretty small. So here's my face, all done, ready to be painted, and don't panic, I am going to show you how to do it now. I just wanted to do it off camera so that I get right and then I can just let you guys see the best version basically. So for the ears, just take some modelling clay, make a little ball, and then kind of just press it like this to give the shape of kind of like little ears and then you add it to the side like that and then obviously you're going to make another one for the other side so that's how I made the ears with the nose it's pretty straightforward you're going to take your modeling clay just roll it make sure it's nice and even and then you're going to arch it like that and then I just added a little point right here on the bottom then you're going to take two little bits like this create little circles with them I think that one's a little bit too small so let's start with this one and then just add it to the bottom to the side of the nose rather like this Obviously these are really small, <laughs> the nostrils on mine are bigger. And then you add the other one. Okay, and then for the mouth, again just taking a small piece, rolling it out. You need a little bit long here then just create a circle like that and then that will be for the mouth let's just stick that here that was the ear and then to create the eyes roll a big piece like this and it's a little bit thicker for the mouth and the eyes arch it like that and you can see that they are pointy on the sides there and this again I just rolled it out then you're going to just connect the two like this you can give them a little pinch and then we're creating the pupil just a circle so this is really straightforward here And for the pupil you can have it just like that but I actually created mine so I closed the eye a little bit and made it a little bit uh, bigger so that it actually fills like touching this side and this bottom part and then you just do the same obviously for the other eye and there you have it that's your face done it's really simple honestly it is you can do it so don't be intimidated and then obviously you're going to be making them directly on your plate so I didn't make them on here because it'll just be a little bit hard to transfer but I made them directly on here and just making sure they're all set in place before I paint it so you can give them a little press a little tap kind of like it the way it is right now but I am going to paint it I'm, I'm going to hopefully paint it this kind of colour actually you know like a terracotta clay natural earth colour 
So I'm going to get my paint out, my acrylic paint. I'm also going to add a little bit of talcum powder. You can add baking soda, that kind of thing, just to give it, you know, the, it's like a hack, it's a technique to give it a thickness and make it look like chalk paint without paying, you know, the hefty price tag for chalk paint. So the paint that I am using is by Magic Fly. I tested this company out and I really did like their acrylic paint. I really love the colours. This one is the exact shade I was looking for. So this is the shade here. And again, like I mentioned, I am going to be mixing it with some powder. So I'm taking my uh, bicarbonate of soda here. mix it up you can see it's really thick now and it's just giving it a nice texture it really just gives it that effect doesn't it I really love it And it really looks like we have used clay and that this is really handmade, the whole entire trinket dish. And just be careful when you're coming to the features. Just paint them a little bit more delicately. So I actually mixed a little bit of this colour here. Just, it's kind of like applying makeup, it was like contour almost. I just felt like this looked a little bit too brown because I wanted it to go with the other two projects that we have made. Now I am going to add a little bit of white just to the features to bring them out a little bit and also again just so that it can go with the other two decor that I have made. So if you choose to add some white to it, you want to take a thin fine paintbrush that's pointed like this and literally just put it in the paint bottle itself I don't know if this is <laughs> this hasn't dried fully but I don't have patience so so I've done the nose and now just doing the eyes Just bringing a little bit of that white paint on the edges. So this is what the trinket dish looks like, our final project for today. So just starting off, we're going to get rid of the backing and these hooks. All you want basically is the frame. Now I've run out of frames so if you have a third frame that will be great because you can just use that doing the same thing just making sure that you have the frame without the glass but I have run out so I'm just going to improvise and use the backing. So I'm just removing everything, I've got the clip off and now I'm just going to get rid of this backing. And as you can see it comes off really easily. Now we're going to be creating the structure. So this is the base and then it's up to you if you'd like to arrange your frames like this. I think I'm going to turn this this way around because you're going to see all the wood details. So I'm just going to glue the two together. We're going to glue them here on the base and then at the top right here so that we connect it all. So I'm just going to be using my pound and glue gun to do this. It's actually broken just yesterday as I was crafting it lasted a very long time so this is the part that's broken <laughs> and I kind of just have to push the glue like this so just bear with me while I do that until I get a new one Now I'm 
using this Poundland planter and I'm also going to be using this hook. It's the only one I've got. I know it's really huge and you don't need to do this. You can use a smaller hook and Poundland do have a lot. These are all from Poundland. Or you can even just tie it over if you don't want to use a hook at all. Just shorten it because if you're using the same plant that I am, it's very, very long. And you don't need all of that height. So you can just turn it around like this on the frame and then knot it. So like I said, you won't need a hook if you do it that way. But I am going to be using this really big hook. <laughs> and hopefully it won't look too big when it's like hanging from it. And then again, like I mentioned, I'm going to be shortening this because it's way too long. So I'm going to find the centre in the frame. And I'm just going to try to get that nice and secure so we can hang the planter from it. Once you have it hanging, you can add some stones or rocks to the bottom, or you can even paint it or spray paint it. You know there's a spray paint that has a rock or stone texture, I think that would look really nice. Again, I'm just making do with what I have. And then to finish off, I'm just taking this succulent. I was debating whether I should take them out and then have like three and add moss to it but I kind of like it like this so you can add more, you can add flowers if you like, anything that you want. I'm just going to add this in the centre and finish up there. For the next DIY we are going to be making a lantern now. In Poundland you get two of these for just a pound. So I've got these from another project. You can see the glass is missing so yours will have a glass with it which is going to be a bonus. So imagine that these have glass in it, okay? So you're going to need, let's see, you're going to need four for the structure and then this will be optional if you want to save money you don't have to do this. But I think I'm going to add like a little bit of detailing on the top so we're going to create a roof to do that you're going to need one two three four you're going to need four sides these long sides here so you're going to need another two packs so that's going to mean six frames in total or four if you aren't going to add the roof to it Once you have all your frames, we're going to just start sticking it all together. So just taking the hot glue again, attaching one side together, and then doing the same for this side. Adding our final one there. So like I mentioned you can leave off there and just add your candles and greenery if you like. I'm going to create a roof now. I have run out of black frames so I've only got the white ones and I think I'm going to just paint them so that they are black. So be careful with this bit. going to get rid of this with some pliers and then just doing the same for the other one the other frame so that I can have four in total and when you need to just get rid of these bits with some pliers now we're going to begin creating the roof adding some hot glue just to the tip there and then you want to angle it like this. Now doing the same on the other side. I think that's a bit too much ugly. And then you're going to add hot glue at the top so you can join the two corners. 
And I'm just going to carry on doing that, adding hot glue to the corners. And securing these on there. You can tell I'm a crafter because I have saved this and it's just come in handy for this project. This was just cut off from the planter from the first DIY. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it on top and knot it so that this is like a decoration I suppose but you can also use it to hang. Okay so you won't have to do this but I have to paint it black so I'm just going to do that and then I'll be back once I've finished and once it's dry. I've added some greenery to it using one of Poundland sprays in the artificial flower section and now I'm going to be taking three LED candles. This is also from Poundland. This is the one that I'm using. It was actually from Christmas time. I'm going to add some twine around it just to give it a little bit of detail in the centre of the candles. Now you're going to flip your lantern so that you've got the bottom and you're going to add some hot glue because we're going to be attaching a glass so that you've got a base. Now I'm going to add the candles inside. And then finally, I think I'm just going to decorate a little more using these flowers. Again, these are from Poundland. They're from the bouquet in the wedding section. Just added two at the back and one at the front. And we are done with DIY number two. I finally got a new glue gun, the hubby just went and got it for me while I was crafting. Can you believe this is just two pounds? It really does last a long time. For the final DIY you're going to need two frames, well you're actually going to need two glasses but because you need the frame to get the glass you're going to need two frames in total. So I've got one here and then I've removed the glass from the other. I'm just go and set that aside for now. Going to open this up and remove the backing. So I just got the frame out and it's broken. Brand new, broken. Unfortunately, my husband just went and got this just for the craft. I literally just sent him and he got the glue gun with it. And now the shops are closed, so I'm going to just somehow have to make do with this. Maybe I can just kind of hot glue it together. So definitely check your frames before you buy them. And this DIY is really nice and simple, quick. And also you'll be saving a lot of money because things like this, pressed flowers in frames, cost a lot of money. We're going to be making this for under £2. You're going to take your pliers and remove these clips because they're going to show and you don't want that. Now to secure the glass, so this is the first glass that we're working with, I've added some hot glue around the borders so that it's nice and stable. So now I've got some greenery, this is ah, oh, this is actually fern that I have pressed. And if you've never pressed flowers or plants before, it's really simple. Just grab whatever you want to, you know, preserve pretty much. And then put it in a page inside a book, close a book, add some weight to it and just keep it there for a few days or a week. And then when you get it out, it's going to look like this. They are really fragile. As you saw, this just basically broke off. I can't actually try to hot glue that back on. So I'm taking both of them and face them downwards. It's up to you what you place in yours. You can have some flowers. You can just have one fan. I don't know if I'm actually going to go for two. It feels like it's a bit squishy. Okay, so I'm going nice and simple, just with one. And then what we're going to do is grab your hot glue. We're going to place glue all across the border on the on the glass. Sorry, I was about to say grass. 
And you've got to be quite quick when you do this. Also making sure all of this, any glue that's on there, that you get rid of it. Just press it down, make sure that it sticks on really nicely. How high end does that look? So, so happy with it. Now, for the backing, you can add some twine, like rope, if you want to hang it. Or you can add a backing that Pound and sell. They've got quite a lot of different ones, so that you can hook it onto the wall. And this would look so lovely if you've got like a set of three. I'm just doing one, so that you can kind of get the idea. Here's a quick look at how all three DIYs look together. I hope that this has inspired you. Make sure you subscribe if you have enjoyed. So for the first DIY, you're going to be grabbing some of these Poundland frames. They come in a pack of two and you can get them in white if you prefer. You're going to need five in total. So you're going to have one spare. Then you're going to grab one of these. They're actually non-slip mats. And this comes in two colors, I believe. I've got both of them here. So the one that I am using in this DIY is gonna be this color here. You can see I've already opened it and used it for a project. So this is the inspo up here. It's a rattan storage basket. It was 35 pounds. And this is gonna cost us how much? One, two, three, four pounds, under four pounds, because you've got a frame that you're gonna have left over. So you're gonna get all your frames ready and take the backing off. So you're gonna open them all up and remove everything, including the glass. So you just want the frames to work with. And then you can see these, these are gonna look hideous. So let's get rid of them. I'm just taking my pliers to do this. So you just remove them like that. So I'm going to do that to all of these, removing the clips and the backing, so I've just got the frames. So you can use super glue if you like, E6000, hot glue, whatever you want. I am going to use two combinations. This one is a stronger glue, and then I'm going to use hot glue just so that it can stick it together a bit quicker for the project. So I did mention that you need five frames in total, but you actually save more money because you end up needing four. I did change my idea a little bit. So we're going to bring back these backings and we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna make use of those. So grab your pliers and just gently remove that. And then you're gonna slide the wood inside here. And this is actually not stuck down, but it's pretty rigid because it's quite tight. It fits in there nicely. And then you're gonna take another one, do the same thing, remove the clip, take your pliers, remove this part here. Wow, that one, that one did it all at once. And then you're gonna just take it, fit it into there. You have to kind of wedge it a little bit, but it does fit. Push it all the way down. So then turn it around. Just put that up there like that. Take your glue. And stick the two together. Now if you want to save money, you don't have to do this because if you're going to use the fifth frame, you are going to have to buy another pack. But I am adding this just for stability at the back here. So I'm just going to take my hot glue to secure that, just on the sides. And then I'm going to place that in the centre because that's where a lot of the weight will be for whatever you place inside your box. So obviously we can't get rattan, unfortunately, from Poundland, so I'm just going to make do with this. So you're going to bring these back so you can measure how 
much you need to cut and we're gonna need four in total so you want to draw with some pencil along this if I can find mine here it is and then you're going to cut it out and we're gonna stick it on to the frames here when you cut it cut it a little bit bigger than it actually is because you need a little bit of leeway when you stick it down And then this is how it's going to look. You're going to put your hot glue on either side and stick it down like that. Doesn't that look so good? Can't wait to have them all stuck down. And then you have to be really quick and be careful of your fingers doing this. I'm going to stick the material inside. finish off I've cut off some burlap and I'm going to stick it on top of the wood to hide all of that. So this is the final look and if I can say so myself I think I've done a pretty good job duping this. I mean it looks trendy, really high end and you know made it for way less compared to how much it originally costs. For the next piece, we are going to be taking this inspo right here. So you can see that it's £20, but we're not going to be spending that. We're going to dupe this for under a pound. So I've got this piece here from Poundland. It was reduced to 50p. It's actually a candle holder. So the inspo is a vase, but I'm going to be turning this into a candle holder. So I've got this here and then you're going to grab some of these bowls and they actually come in a set of four for a pound and you only need two. You're going to take these two bowls and stick them together like this. Before you do that, I do recommend adding some weight in there. So take some stones and just place them in one of the bowls. Now you're going to take your glue and add it along the dish. This is going to be a little tricky. <laughs> And you've got to be super quick to stick them together. Now I'm going to take my candle holder for 50p and we're going to just stick that on top right here. Then once you're done sticking everything together, just take some spray paint and apply whatever colour you want to it. You guys, I took the longest time trying to figure out what colour I wanted to spray paint this and I'm so glad that I went with this one in the end. I think it's really soothing and I am obsessed with this kind of minimal designs. I think it just really helps clear your mind. It doesn't look like clutter in the house either, which I really, really love. For the final DIY, we're going to be duping this here, so it's £25 but we're going to be making it for just over a pound. You're going to grab one of these tins and then they sell these three pack mixer glasses. It's empty because I've used them for projects but I do have one left over for this project. So this is really simple, you're just going to take your mixer glass and I have measured to get it nice and centred and I'm going to stick it together. So I think I'm actually going to go with two combinations of glue because the hot glue probably won't be strong enough. Once you've stuck the two together you can just spray paint it. So I'm going to go I think with this colour here. This actually has stone texture as well. So in the end I had to go with black because for some reason my Rust-Oleum spray paint wasn't working even though it was brand new. I tried everything but anyway I still love this. I think it's just so simple. So for your first DIY you're going to be grabbing this wreath and it is green and I've just started colouring it. So I'm changing the colour to gold and I'm doing that with these two colours here because this is gold but it's a little bit too thin. It wasn't applying very well so I have to use a sharpie which is supposed to be gold but it's kind of coming up as bronze and then I'm going in with the Arteza on top of that. So you can spray paint this if you like. So I've just finished doing that. That actually took a while, especially with the two layers. 
Now I've left this to dry a little bit and now you're going to be taking some string or twine. This is actually twine and I thought I was going to have to colour in some twine black but thankfully I found this on Zadil, a website that I use a lot for my craft supplies now. So I'm going to start by tying this on here onto the wire. Just make a little knot place it wherever you like so I've got mine around there and you can make it like half if you like but I'm gonna actually go about here and I'm gonna make another knot you want it to be nice and tight so make sure it is because it won't look good otherwise then we're gonna bring it back up there then when you brought it back up you're gonna make another knot otherwise they just move around trust me I've tried <laughs> So again, making sure it's nice and taut. So you're just threading it through. Then you go back down, do the same thing, make another knot at the bottom. So I have four in total. I'm just going to cut off these bits now. And then the bottom. So on the top I've just wrapped, wrapped around some more twine. I'm going to do the same at the bottom here. I think it just tidies it up a little. So cut that. And the way that I did it was just threading it through in between the string. Now we're going to start over again dragging them down at this end here. So I'm going to take my string, start off here. It's going to kind of overlap a little bit and stick that bit of string on. You're going to do the same thing, just making knots at the bottom and the top. So I'm just threading that through. This one is a little bit more tedious because I'm going for more along this way so here I went for four pieces I kind of have ten pieces in my mind but we'll see I might not be able to be that patient so again I have finished doing the strings and I did go with ten <laughs> I will tell you, you have to be a little bit patient for this project. Now I'm just going to cover again the gold at the bottom and then I have to do the top as well. So just wrapping it around as you can see, putting it through. So now I'm just going to take um, some hot flame to get rid of all of these and tidy the twine up a little bit. So here's our first look for less project of today and I have to say I really do love this like I think black and gold just have this really high end classy look and I can't believe I made this for just over a pound. For the next DIY really nice and easy I'm taking one of these flutes they come apart so you can stick it on with hot glue if you want but I think it's fine and then I'm taking a dish now you can get one from Poundland like this one here I've just run out so I'm making do with what I have this is from the thrift store and you simply just go and stick the two together I'll leave the inspo here um, I am going to be using this glue here which I can't remember if I've used before it seems so but hopefully it's stronger than hot glue if I can open it, yep. I'm going to use a combination, but I do want these to be strong, so I'm going to add this as well. And then we're going to spray paint it, and you can go with whatever colour you like. Honestly, I know this one was really quick and easy, but it actually might be my favourite of today's projects. And these things really do cost a lot. Like, who would know we made this for a couple of pence? On to our final look for less. And again, I'm going to leave the inspo picture up here. And we're going to be using everyday items for this one here. So I'm taking these tubs again from Poundland. And these items here, this was from one of the summer toys. And this is a bowl, it came in a set. 
so I'm going to be sticking these together this is how it's going to go you're going to have your container down first and then this and then this but we're going to be adding more to this DIY but let's just start with sticking them all together so again grab some glue add it to the edges of this container again I'm going to be using a little hot glue as well grab your hoop, stick that on let's turn it around just to make sure it's nice and centred then this one here Okay, so now you're going to grab some cardboard and take your structure you're going to draw along the ball we're going to cut this out Now this is optional but I'm going to add a few rocks just to make sure this is always kind of weighted down. Then you're going to take your cardboard and we're going to stick this on top. Now you're going to grab one of these mats from Poundland for a pound and I'm taking my stencil almost. <laughs> And I'm going to draw along this as well. And now we're going to cut this out. So now I'm going to set my circle aside and I'm going to take this out to spray paint it. I'm going to be using this black spray paint. So this is all spray painted now. I'm going to bring back the circle that we cut from the doormat. And I'm taking my hot glue, I'm going to stick this on. going to set this aside just for a second because I want to show you something else. We're going to be taking a placemat from Poundland and what I've done is as you can see I've snipped it so it's really really easy. Let me just show you it's kind of like there's a stitch. There's a simple stitch and I've just cut that off and then you can just literally pull it like this and it comes apart really easily. So because I'm going with like the black and the gold theme I'm going to tidy the edges here I'm going to be adding this to the side so you're going to take your hot glue and attach that all around Now we're going to be doing the same thing, I'm going to tidy up the edges, well there's nothing to tidy up but you can kind of maybe tell that it's a container at the bottom. I'm going to put it right here where the lip is, all around like that and I actually think it looks better with a bit of gold to break up the black. I was thinking in my mind that this kind of looks like a drum <laughs> when I brought it down my husband was like is that a drum it looks so cool and I was like I'm not sure it can be a drum if everyone wants it to be <laughs> so that's all of today's projects I really hope that they have inspired you and you can see that you can really make some high-end decor on a budget make sure you subscribe if that's the content you like and I'll see you in the next video take care bye